My name is Eduardo Duvalcaire. I am an artist and uh, also a curator. Uh, I hail from Haiti, but I've been here quite a bit of time. I was invited by the Tampa Museum to organize and help select from a series of drapeau voodoo, which are these voodoo flags. And literally, they are flags because they are held in the voodoo ceremonies as such. They herald and hail the spirits that are going to be honored in the service that day. There are lots of voodoo spirits. Africa is a vast continent with many, 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 many tribes. Each group of people from Africa came with their own gods. So there will be a lot of different flags and interpretations of them. It's interesting how this process has become very much specialized to Haiti because I don't think it exists anywhere. Having been confronted with the armies of Napoleon, which were from hailing from all over Europe, they used to carry standards. And these standards were very elaborate. They were done in gold thread. So, you know, like under the bright air, Caribbean sun, you know, like they would shine and they would be very impressive. And uh, it did not escape the Haitian soldiers or the Haitian rebels. And they started making those things yeah, similarly. Golden thread, uh, I don't know, I have to look into that, but probably more expensive than sequins that were metal or tin. This is one of the versions of the, the genesis of these voodoo flags. Now they are, what they are using are mostly plastic sequins that comes in all the colors of the rainbow. These things have lasted and were transformed into these groups of symbols and subsequently used after the revolution. Right in front of me, there is the god of the sea, Agüe, and he's the one that controls, first of all, the voyages of the slave ships that were carrying these people. He protected them. And if, for example, I mean, as I've read, and which is pretty horrible, whenever there was uh, um, bad weather, uh, they considered the slaves as ballast. You know what I mean? Like what maintains the boat, you know? So they would throw them off. And uh, he would be the ones that recuperate them and brings them back to to Africa or elsewhere. His representation is always a boat, in whatever form it is, whether it's a small canoe to a huge transatlantic. He's also signified by anchors and other such. All of them are important because each of them represent an aspect of life which is important for the survival of the community. I don't think they considered themselves artists. They were just creating objects for services, for ceremonies that was important to them. Before they were totally anonymous at the beginning. But now, you know, like everybody signs their spectacular beaded artwork and uh, it's a completely different story. And I think it's extraordinary that something like that should come out from such a complicated history. <laughs>